Hi, I'm Julie, a Van Balzer, and today I've got a project for you that uses your scan and cut to help you create a pattern for hand embroidery. It's super cool, and it's had me stitching all month long. From the home screen, I'm going to choose Pattern, and into these designs, and I'm going to arrow down and get to these sort of more fancy designs. And then I'm going to scroll through until I see something that I like, that I think would be fun to use as an embroidery pattern. Hmm, I really like this heart. I think that's really pretty. So I'm gonna make it small enough. It's a little bit bigger than I want. I want it to be maybe four or five inches. So I'm just gonna hold the um, minus key down until it gets to the size that I feel comfortable with. Okay, so somewhere between four and five inches. That looks good to me. So I'm all set. I'm gonna say set. Then this symbol right here, I'm gonna hit that. That is the scan button, and it's gonna scan in the material that I've loaded on the mat. So now that I can see it on the screen, I'm gonna drag it so that it's right in the center of my fabric. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And what I wanna do is I want to draw it. So now notice that the start button hasn't lit up and that's because I don't have a pen in the carriage and the machine knows. So I'm going to remove the blade and I'm gonna take the universal pen holder, which if you've never used the universal pen holder, I do have a video on how to use it, but basically it means that you can use most pens with your Scan and Cut. And this is compatible but with Scan and Cut 1, 2, the Design and Cut, um, the DX, you can do whatever. But you can see you put it into the height adjuster, just close it up, and then I'm gonna pop this into the blade holder, and you can see now I have a pen there. And, if, and as soon as I put the pen in, that Start button goes, which is awesome, because when the Start button lights up, then you can press it. finished drawing I'm going to unload my mat I'm ready to start embroidering and so I have some variegated uh, embroidery floss this has lots of different colors in it um, I have a needle with a big eye really really big eye um, some snips to cut the thread this was the marking pen that I used and I just wanted to point out that it's a marking pen that disappears on um, fabric when you iron it or wash it so that's why I'm not worried I don't have to stitch directly on these lines I also you may notice I pinked which is you just use pinking shears the edges of my fabric so it will ravel uh, a lot less or not at all when I am working with it. I have a couple different embroidery hoops here because I wanted to show you. So the fact is the wooden hoops are great for display. They're not so actually great for hand stitching. And so I might use this one for display. It's kind of the perfect size to make this be big, but it would really be hard to stitch because you're so close to the edge of the hoop. I do really like the plastic hoops for stitching because they're just uh they hold things a little more tightly now even though this seems bigger and to fit more it's still really hard to get this close to the hoop edge so that's why i have so much fabric because i think it's better to use the biggest hoop that you can so you really have space to get your hand around there so in case you've never hooped um fabric before for hand stitching okay the embroidery hoop is in two parts and that's true whether you're using uh, a bamboo or a plastic hoop okay the part that's just a circle that doesn't have the fixtures that actually goes underneath the fabric okay and you can kind of see it sits in here almost like in a pie pan and then you put the other part on top and you just push it down and around push it down and around if it doesn't go it's because you haven't loosened the screw enough so you're just going to turn that until it's loose enough and then that should, there you go, slide right over that. You forget that fabric has depth, which is why it suddenly doesn't fit. There you go. And you want it nice and tight. Now you can loosen it a lot. I prefer to loosen it a little and then really fit it down on there, but everybody's different. Okay, that looks like it fits on there. And you can see it's already pretty tight because I 
didn't let it just slide on. So I'm going to tighten this just by screwing it. You can see that here. And then if I feel like it's not tight enough, that's when you want to flip it over and sort of pull at the edges. And you can see that if your fabric is too small, like this is a little bit small, it's hard to get those parts to tighten them up. But I try to make it all the way around to kind of pull at it and make sure that it's evenly tightened, evenly tightened. And then again, you want to keep using that screw to tighten it down. So it doesn't need to be, it's not like machine embroidery where it really needs to be like a drum. It's a little more forgiving when you're doing hand embroidery. That's the nice thing. Okay, so I think this is tight enough for me and ready to start stitching. I like to cut a length of thread that is about an arm length, but you can work with whatever works for you. I also prefer to work with two strands at a time. So this is actually made of multiple strands. So what I will do, as you can see, I'm pulling two threads out. There's usually six strand embroidery floss is pretty standard. And then you just kind of split it. Now, if you stitch with all six, you'll get it, it'll go faster, it'll be bolder. I think it's slightly more delicate when you go with two, which is just a look I prefer. It's not a right or a wrong, it's a personal preference. So now I'm gonna thread my needle, and I always needle my thread. I put the thread into my fingers, and then I push the eye of the needle onto it, and you can see it comes through every time then technically you're not supposed to do any knots on the back of embroidery, but you can do a quilter's knot if you feel more comfortable and you're not worried about anybody looking at the back of your project and judging you. Um, I'm gonna do that because I don't care if anybody looks at the back of my project and judges me. Knots make the back of embroidery both ugly and bulky, but since this is gonna hang on a wall is my plan for it, then I don't care what the back looks like. So I'm just gonna cut off the tail end here. And now we are ready to stitch. So let's go through a basic stitch. So I'm gonna come up through the back. You can see the needle emerging, right? And I have that knot there, so I know that's secure. So now I'm going to put, go down into my fabric, and this is gonna create a single stitch, okay? But what I actually want to do is a back stitch. And what that means now is the next place I'm going to come up is right here at this corner. Okay, so you can see like I've skipped a space. And then I'm going to go back, that's why it's called a back stitch, into that hole that was left behind. Okay, and again, I'm going to go ahead and then fill the hole. And I'm going to go ahead and fill the hole. So you're always going, you know, this is why it's called a back stitch, you're always going backwards. You sort of do one stitch ahead and then you go backwards. And the goal is to try to get it into the previous, actually into the previous hole. But one of the charms of hand stitching, I think, is its kind of wonky nature, which is that it's not always perfect, you know? And the nice thing about stitching on fabric, unlike paper, is you can make a million holes. You can have the needle come through a hundred million times until you find the right spot, right? I can poke through here a million times, and then when I find the right spot, I just come right through like this. Now, I think it's really cool that every single pattern uh, can become an embroidery pattern, right? Because you can decide, are you gonna fill in these areas? Or are you just gonna outline them? Like, what is your personal preference? We're doing, there's also a bajillion different embroidery stitches. We're doing a really, really simple basic, like maybe the most basic embroidery stitch, which is a back stitch. 
You could do a chain stitch, a daisy stitch, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. You're just going to keep going around. And then you can decide later if you want to add in French knots or anything else like that. But my policy, I'm not sure it's a policy, my feeling on the matter is um, I personally like to sort of outline everything and then make some decisions once I see what the outline looks like. You also, by the way, you're an artist and you have the right to skip any portion of this design that you don't wanna do, because remember, you're just gonna iron it and that pen is gonna go away. So, super duper easy. So you can see that I've made some progress here and I wanted to talk about changing threads. So when you get to the point where it's hard to get through. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the back, so finish your last stitch up. And then, now for proper embroidery, for real embroidery, what you're supposed to do is you simply weave the tail, that's this thing that we're doing, sort of back through the stitching that you've already done. So there is no knot. Can you see how the needle's just going back through the stitching that we've already done? But we're sort of already being rebels when it comes to embroidery and putting knots in. So if you wish to knot it, you can, but I think it's totally fine, especially this is probably gonna go on the wall. It doesn't need to be that secure. So then I can remove the needle and take my scissors and trim it. And now that is securely in those stitches. So when I take my new thread and let me just go ahead and thread my needle and again like I'm going to create a quilter's knot but technically what you're supposed to do is weave this through some of the previous stitches and then basically just catch it but like I said I'm an embroidery rebel so if we go back to the front for a second, what I wanna do is I wanna come up somewhat seamless, seamlessly with my next thread. So where I would have come up if I had kept going, go back down and then continue on. And you can see that from the front, it's as if absolutely nothing changed. Now the reason that you want to not have any knots on the back is so that your embroidery lies nice and flat and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not that worried about it since I know this is gonna go onto the wall. So I'm gonna keep stitching until I manage to finish just the last part here and the last part here. So you can see I finished my stitching. There's the front, there's the back, and I've taken it out of the hoop. You can see the hoop lines. Now you can iron this to get rid of any stray pen marks that haven't been covered and to get with those marks, but I'm actually gonna put it into this small wooden hoop. So it seems kind of silly to iron it since I won't need that anyway. Now, since this is permanently going in the hoop, you have some options. You can put some glue in the hoop so that you don't have to think about it ever coming out, or you can just assume that it's gonna be fine. And again, it works the same way. I put the one circle underneath. I sort of pie pan it to see how it's gonna fit. Once it looks good, I can put the top hoop on, and if it looks like it needs a little bit of adjustment, I'll do my adjustments at this point because, because this is going in here permanently, I do want it to be fairly centered. And similarly, there you go, it looks kind of good just like that. So I'm gonna tighten this hoop down and I can do any um, pulling and tugging in the back that I need to. Okay, once I feel that it's tight enough, I have a couple options for what to do with the excess fabric. I can just tuck in the excess fabric here and then when it hangs on the wall, you'll never see it right? Another option is I can go back to those pinking shears and I can go ahead and just cut around this um, shape. I have to cut very close to it. So it pretty much means that it's never coming out of this hoop. So that's what I'm going to do. But you can decide if you think it might come out of the hoop, you just sort of tuck everything in. You can even use a basting stitch to hold it in. So you can see I cut it off. It's pinked so it shouldn't ravel that much, especially since it's just going to go on the wall. But here is my finished art ready to hang up, all thanks to the Scan and Cut.
Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, please visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, don't forget about the Scan and Cut website at scanandcut.com. <music>